As surely as the sun rises each day, so must it set. So it is with review. This is to be the last issue after more than 35 years. 1947 was a watershed year in the annals of the coal mining industry and of the British people. A once fragmented industry came into public ownership. And this took place at a time when Britain was staggering back after the trauma of the Second World War. Not for the first time, or the last, the nation was gripped by a fuel crisis. In one of the harshest winters on record, homes and industry were desperate for the heat and power that only coal could bring. From a thousand pits, the miners responded, and somehow the demand was met. But the second half of the 20th century has been one of swings and roundabouts a continuing economic switchback. Ten years after the mines were nationalized, there came a flood of cheap oil from across the oceans. Expediency, not common sense, jumped on the bandwagon. The markets sharply declined for what was then our only indigenous source of power. As industry switched to oil burning, so did the coal stockpiles grow. Collieries were closed. Men were relocated and the rundown of the industry in the 60s got underway. It could have been a knockout blow, but it wasn't. The swings and roundabouts were still turning. 1974 and the end of cheap oil. The end of cheap anything for that matter. The energy crisis slowed the country nearly to a halt. Conserving energy became an urgent necessity. People were forced into finding out how to use energy more efficiently, less wastefully. Fortunately, side by side with the closures and the layoffs of the 60s, Foresight had dictated a restructuring of the mining industry. A period of planning and reconstruction to replace the often antique mining capacity which had been lost. The headstocks of new and rebuilt mines rose phoenix-like out of the ashes. And the very techniques of winning the coal, of driving roadways into fresh reserves, were revolutionized. A new generation of machines and support systems gave a reduced workforce more power to its elbows than had ever been dreamed of before 1947. Productivity rose as fewer men were backed up by increasingly sophisticated equipment. New techniques made coal mining a safer and less labor-intensive industry, where many of the more back-breaking jobs were taken on by machines. control and monitoring made it possible for men to be removed from some of the areas of highest risk. The preparation of coal for the market was automated. Industry and the power stations demanded a clean product. They got it. The transport of coal was revolutionized too. The traditional railway coal trucks 
gave way to rapid loaded hopper cars, made up into merry-go-round trains, hauling a thousand tons a time, non-stop from pit to power station. That word again, the merry-go-round. This time, the 1980s. As the world recession began to bite and much of industry came to a dead end, once again, the markets for coal declined and the stockpiles of the 1960s began to grow again. Mining always has been and always will be especially sensitive to the economic barometer. Mining has been traditionally a cyclic industry, with men carrying out a variety of tasks, shift by shift, around the clock, often under the difficulties imposed by having to battle nature. The cycle of mining operations has been mirrored in the cycle of the industry's fortunes. During its 35 years, Review has been able to chart remarkable developments in terms of both men and machines. sustain the prosperity of the nation. It's hard for them, perhaps, to face up to the fact that so far no government in Britain has been prepared to devise a flexible and integrated energy policy. Britain, after all, is the richest country in energy in Europe, yet, paradoxically, one of the poorest nations in the community. They, more than most of us, realize that all energy resources are finite. We cannot count on our oil and natural gas to last into the 21st century. Nuclear power remains an enigma. Only coal, exemplified by the impending birth of the new Selby coal field and its vast reserves, can guarantee us a supply of energy for centuries ahead. Selby is a forerunner, a blueprint for the other great coal fields of the future. There must and will be a light at the end of the energy tunnel and, born of coal, it will dazzle us. Thank you.